Welcome back to the conversation. I'm Nuberetto. Conversation talk about different events going on in the city of Broughton. But last few months we've been focusing on local politics and we've been covering the mayor's race. So primary is over. So it's now down to two. Now down to two. So I'm here with um, mayoral candidate Jimmy Pereira. Jimmy, first and foremost, congratulations on on getting through the primaries. Uh, your campaign worked really hard. Your whole team worked really hard. So it's now time for the final stretch. Yes, sir. November 5th. Um, first and foremost, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's a pr- pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, J- Jimmy, first and foremost, you know, a lot of times with debates, you can't really um, – Tell your whole point. I mean, right. the debates are awesome. They're great. And they're needed. But, you know, you're limited to one or two minutes. Right. So what we want to do is kind of give you an open platform to really explain yourself, explain, mm-hmm. um, you know, what your plans are mm-hmm. um, if you do win in no- on November 5th. So, but what I ask right off the bat is your, um, your competitor, uh, Bob Sullivan, and, and I could say both really good people. Mm-hmm. Um, what separates you from Bob Sullivan? A lot of people want to know. What, what separates you from Bob Sullivan? Great. Uh, I think my experience separates me from uh, Bob Sullivan. Uh, growing up in the city of Brockton and the many, many different difficult communities that we, and neighborhoods that we have here, I was exposed to that early on in my life. Growing up on Winthrop Street, Newberry, right off of Green Street, uh, Tremont Street, another uh, tough area. Uh, North Warren Avenue is where I own my home now, but right uh, across the street from me, where I'm at now, I used to live at the Roosevelt Heights, which was Richmond Street, and also Crescent Court uh, Housing Development also known as East Side Project. So, uh, ever since growing up, I have uh, been uh, exposed to you know the uh, uh, tragedies and difficulties that we have in our city, but also exposed to the resiliency that we have in the city of Brockton. Uh, looking at the blight uh, in my neighborhoods, I always question, you know, how can we make those changes? So, uh, through my life, I always mem- remembered, you know, those uh, experiences and how one day I can hopefully come back and change those experiences. Uh, Going at, growing up in the DYS, the primary use services, and the foster care system, uh, and being able to connect with my uh, uh, providers, such as you know my caseworkers as well, too. Uh, that's the experience that I know my co- opponent doesn't have. Uh, a lot of our uh, community members are also in, uh, you know, whether it be DYS or Department of Children and Families, so I'm able to relate to a lot of people. Um, but also, you know, some of the things that I have uh, in similarity with uh, Mr. Sullivan is uh, I have an education. I went to Westfield State University, uh, and even then, too, the different experience I have there is I focused on community building. I focused on geography, region planning. I minded in ethnic and gender studies so I could learn more about the diverse culture. Uh, I was able to sit down with people from all different uh, areas of the world, uh, the, not just the urban environment, but the suburban and rural environment, and learn about their experiences as well learn about the issues that they face in their community and how it may be different but it's all it's all still the same there is domestic violence in you know or suburban or rural communities there is drug use uh, there's over medication as well too uh, and there's a lack of communication even in the uh, family household so a lot of our families in brockton are going through the same thing and uh, my experience again as a regional planner has allowed me to not just work with the brockton area but the uh, region at, at in whole uh, and also working in Western Mass, I'm able to see uh, best practices and other things that were implemented there that we can do here. But also, again, with my experience here in the city of Brockton, knowing that there's a characteristic in Brockton that should be preserved. And it's the uh, fighter's characteristic where we don't give up here. Uh, we make sure to put up a good fight and we make sure to move forward. Uh, Jimmy, you know, you say experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but the critics going to say experience bob sullivan has 14 years right on on, on the council so, so that's experience so how do you combat that with your age right. obviously you're younger how, how do you combat that government experience with right. and you're talking about life experience right i've worked with the government for over uh, half a decade here locally in the uh, old colony planning council i've uh, been able to work with the different layers of government as well so not just local but regional, county, and uh, state, and even federal as well, too. I also made sure to focus uh, my academic experience on uh, focusing on go- government and also the community and the community connection. Uh, when you look at city management, it's not just you know uh, city government. It's also looking at uh, the uh, innovative practices that you want to implement, the policies. So as a planner, we focus on the interdisciplinary approach. 
uh, I really focused on making sure that I acquired the skills to be able to come back to my community and help and contribute. Uh, so we focused not just on transportation and not just on community development, but of course with environmental impacts. You also look at society, societal impacts as well too and how we can make sure that everyone is uh, able to coalesce. Uh, again, and also making sure that you look at the uh, advancement of technology and how do you implement that with uh, manpower or people power to make sure that you're looking at all different facets of moving a city forward. This is something that, you know, through 14, 15 years, I haven't seen uh, my uh, counterpart do any of that. Uh, you know, we could talk about talk about uh, whether it be the street lights and things of the sort, but people are still getting run over in the city of Brockton. So we still have that problem. And again, you want to look at advancement of technology and with my skills, I also don't forget to look to the past. What what's going on, you know, in the past, and uh, what happened there that we can continue to implement, or what can we change and adapt as well? Let me ask you um, uh, about public safety. And mm -hmm. you know, um, the last few weeks was some controversy. There was obviously some issues going on at Brockton mm -hmm. High School that spread into the neighborhood. Right. Uh, a few ugly situations. Um, if you're in office, how would you improve? Community, uh, policing and community relations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I always, uh, you know, talked about community policing, community engagement, and the uh, betterment of that as well too. So as a planner, we make sure to do everything for the betterment of public good. So what I would like to do is make sure that you know we're en engaging our community members on different uh, levels, or different facets. So it's not just in the schools, but in the community as well. Uh, you know, after school programs community engagement so i want to uh, revamp the system as it is right uh communication is key i want to utilize and everything that i do and work with in government is not just interdisciplinary but it's uh, a conglomerate everything connects and relates to each other so uh, i want to make sure that uh, we implement neighborhood associations right they will be the community liaison between government and community members but in those uh, neighborhood associations i also want to make sure that we assign uh police officers to those wards to those associations that are going to continue to connect and also connect with other wards and other neighborhood associations and other police officers that are assigned in each ward so we'll have a tax a task force uh, of police officers that are going to go out and engage with the community uh, I've seen different tactics such as the C3 uh, community initiative implemented in Springfield by a Massachusetts state trooper uh, who basically used the uh, skills that he learned while overseas he's a veteran uh, and he was in Iraq and there they used they basically it's called a counterinsurgency uh, uh, a tactic where you go into the community, you knock on doors, and you just make sure you are, you know, just like a c candidate would do, uh, you introduce yourself as a police officer, who you are in the, uh, who's in the community, uh, and uh, you could be the plain clothes or, you know, um, doesn't have to be in full uniform, but maybe it's a you know a sweater with the police, brought the police on it, and you know they're uh, casually uh, 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 dressed and go on to the neighborhood, and it's not just looking at you know community events where you have the cruiser and the lights flashing. It's really going out, engaging, sharing information, uh, and also having, uh, we are now increasing our capacity for diverse police officers, but we also want to make sure we look at cultural competency for those that may not be of minority or of uh, colored uh, um, background or uh, race, uh, because cultural competency is for everyone. Um, it's better to make sure that you know who your neighbor is is better to know who uh, your counterpart is by sharing experiences and also listening and learning from their experiences so we're also going to be doing a lot of more workshops I believe when you sit down and you know whether it be in a circle or in a u-shaped form where everyone's sharing uh, information and sharing their stories and experiences you're able to relate more or you even able to build on common ground because you may not have known what that police officer went through and that police officer may not have known what that community member has gone through uh, and this is for the long term uh, this is short term midterm long term goals and uh, initiatives that we will be implementing but knowing that we can do it together and we have to do it together uh, because if we don't you see what you see at uh, uh, down on Forest Avenue after the school uh, and again making sure that uh, the youth and our police officers know each other as well, so making sure that we collaborate. Uh, we do have uh, the uh, uh, Young Police Academy. Uh, we want to make sure to uh, engage with that as well, too, and continue to increase and expand on that as well. Uh, because, you know, my, with myself growing up, I never really was able to see a police officer in my community. I didn't. There was one time on Newberry Street where I remember a police officer pulled up, uh, and, you know, he was engaged with us. It was a cool experience, but after that, you know, I never seen him. 
past that so we want to make sure that's more frequent because the more frequency you have there the more engagement you have and the more understanding and more communication comes out of that as well yeah i think that's huge i think communication is huge i mean you know uh, yeah, I'm passionate about this issue. Just doing right. the police document in the last three years, and mm-hmm. you know, Thank one thing, one thing I noticed that um, actually I've, I talked to a police officer in Boston. What they tell me is that I never thought about this. Is that you know, officers see mm-hmm. things we would never want to see sometimes on a daily basis, on a daily, and basis. then come back home like nothing's happening in right. terms of maybe um, offering services for them to mm-hmm. talk to somebody. Yes, you know, because. You know, people in the inner city are seeing trauma. They're seeing mm-hmm. trauma, too, on a yeah, daily yeah. basis. It's supposed right to act there. normal the next day. So, And that's not normal. Right. I know. And I kind of do that as well, too. And I grew up kind of doing that. So that's why, like, when I look at a police officer's life, I kind of see and understand that, you know, there's trauma there. You know, and it's like, that's why I always say it's when we have more police officers in our community and more community members getting to know who our police officers are, there's a stronger sense of responsibility. There's a stronger sense of respect and a stronger sense of communication. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what the uniform is, whether you're in a hoodie or in a, uh, a police officer's uniform or a first responder's uniform or uh, a nurse's uh, uh, uniform, we all see things that we need to find some type of guidance, some types of recuperation from it because people are traumatized. Uh, I was at the Mindset Forum uh, uh, Summit that was early on this year at the Fuller Arts Museum, and we talked about how, uh, you know, it gets passed on and it continues to get passed on, and we have to break that cycle. That's why I chose to run for office because through my experience, I've seen even in the professional field that if you have a report or a suggestion or a plan and you give it to, you know, whether it be the mayor's office or elected official and there's no political will behind it, it's just going to sit on the shelf. So a lot of the initiatives and the changes that we want to see have been suggested, have been brought forth to, you know, our political administration. Some have moved forward. Some have, you know, just stayed stagnant on it and doesn't don't have the political will. So that's why I'm running because I know I have the drive I have the experience the one that really counts the experience that a lot of other people share as well too and again I have the energy to uh, do it inclusively with other people because I know I can't do it by myself and I also know that there are other people like me that you know want to see this city moving forward that have been traumatized that have the experience but use that to push them forward as well but we do have to talk about it and make sure that it's not something that affects us and it's not going to hamper us down. And again, break the cycle because generational trauma is real. A few more questions. Um, sure. in, in terms of housing, a lot of new housing mm-hmm. has been developed in, in Brockton. And sometimes, you know, um, the, the criticism is that these new developers are getting tax uh, right. breaks. Right. And, you know, the regular homeowner yeah. is not getting the tax breaks. No. So, in terms of that, um, how would you go about combating that? I mean, you know you always want new businesses and new right. housing coming to exactly. Brockton, but how would you go about, you know, in terms of uh, giving certain businesses and certain people right. uh, tax breaks? And also, you know, it, there's a whole, you know, buzzword between market rate housing, right. okay, um, and, and affordable housing. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Great question. So I'm a homeowner as well. Uh, I've you know, seen taxes keep going up, no reinvestment in the community. So we definitely need to make changes there. Um, what I want to do is revamp uh, everything that we have, whether you look at the ordinances, uh, the housing strategy as well. We have to update and make sure we uh, revamp the system. Uh, there is a housing crisis still. Uh, and the difference between market rate and uh, affordable rate is that you look at the uh, average median income, uh, 30%, uh, and who's how much money you're spending on uh, housing. Uh, so market rate, you know, you'd have uh, something that maybe two bedrooms, three bedrooms at 1,800, or this, you know, at a, at a, at a, uh, at a they'd say market rate because that's the uh, general uh, pricing for whatever uh, housing structure you're looking at. Um, Affordable housing, and people think affordable housing is just for low income. It's not necessarily true. Uh, you always have to look at uh, what the scale is. You know, what are people going through, and where they're uh, investing their dollars in. And if uh, you're whether a single mother or a elderly person, 55 and older, or someone looking to transition into the city, or looking to uh, getting to the workforce, you look at the different strategies that are implemented for that. So one thing that we want to look at is the ordinance and making sure that in-law apartments are something that is on the books uh, and we're also looking at making sure that when we're looking at affordable housing we're not just looking at housing developments we're also looking at you know again 55 and older uh, transit oriented development uh, things that are going to help invigorate the uh, community uh, there's also uh, initiatives and incentives incentives for uh, first-time home buyers we want to make sure that we're educating people on home ownership uh, and it's not just making sure we get more homeowners so we can alleviate 
the home tax rate uh, because the more homeowners you have then the more spread out the uh, the pressure is for uh, tax payers um, but also widening the commercial tax base so when we widen the commercial tax base then you know more businesses are bringing revenue in then they're able to help supplement with the uh, the uh, home, home uh, property tax rate uh, what we would be doing is when we're looking at in incentives like the tie, like the TIF, uh, which is tax increment uh, uh, exemption and uh, tax uh, incentives financing, financials, uh, financing. So we want to make sure that these deals, these negotiations aren't crippling the city of Brockton. So we're looking at something that's more feasible, that's not going to uh, be a sweetheart deal. Uh, basically, that sweetheart deal is something that, you know, the developer is going to enjoy. Uh, and even sometimes that deal doesn't even follow through because it's look, it's at a uh, the time span is far too long, 20 years at a, you know, with, and then looking at the exemption and how far that goes as well. So you're going to furlough a tax for a business that's supposed to bring in all this money. But what happens when you push that down, down the years, you're not getting the dollars. And then what if that business development uh, doesn't survive the 10 years, 20 years and has to uh, write off uh, their losses on the uh, on a tax? tax taxes so we need to make sure that we're looking again at different incentives and initiatives that are going to uh, be fair for all uh, and make sure that we're bringing businesses that are going to stay in for the long run uh, I want to make sure that we're building on technology sector information science uh, bio life sciences as well because this is the new age but we also want to make sure that we're able to retrain uh, people that want to get into the field uh, some people don't want to uh, stay in retirement they want to you know continue to work uh, and some can't afford to retire as well too so we need to make sure that we're looking at livable wages businesses that are going to bring in livable wages and uh, prevailing wages as well uh, and especially when we're looking at contracts and negotiating with contracts is it feasible for the people of Brockton uh, I'm a homeowner I am a planner a community transportation planner I am also a public servant so I have to make sure that I put the people first um, because my family lives here, uh, my friends, community members, uh, uh, co-workers live here, and they know where I live. So if I don't do right, they know where to find me. So uh, <laughs> we have to make sure that we do the right thing. And again, professional, professionally, as a planner, we look at the code of conduct and we look at the code of ethics as well, too, to make sure that everything we're doing uh, is by the rule of law and making sure everything that we're doing is ethical and is uh, going to uh, move, move the city forward. Last question, you know, uh, a lot of people talk about hiring practices and, you know, having mm -hmm. the staff reflect the the, um, the residents. Mm -hmm. How do you balance um, having a diverse hiring process but also hiring the most qualified? Exactly. So what I'd like to implement is a citizens advisory committee. Uh, this will be a committee that is uh, basically encompassed by the uh, people of Brockton. Uh, of course, a few elected officials. And I want the uh, city council to have a say in it as well, too. Uh, and really, a lot of the things that I want to do is to make sure that um, city council and other uh, elected officials are involved in the process but with the citizens advisory committee uh, the committee will look at not just hiring practices and you know be in, included in the interview process but also uh, look at recommendation and uh, other uh, discipline methods to make sure that uh, everything is uh, what we want uh, as far as community members and making sure that everything is something that is going to be able to hold people accountable uh, and that's what we need to do we need we need accountability uh, we need the checks and balances as well and I think the community members should be involved in that uh, we always again want to know that I want people to know that cultural competency is for everybody uh, we want the most qualified we want you know of course we want diversity but we do not want to leave nobody out uh, we want to make sure that uh, just because you don't know a language doesn't disqualify you from that position uh, we want to make sure that there's room to grow as well too so making sure that there's opportunities for those to uh, acquire different skills and learn different skills uh, especially when you look at uh, uh, customer service or when you look at uh, employer employees and management as well too uh, I like to work with everyone um, but you know in City Hall and any type of uh, business, uh, there's that hierarchy, but uh, we want to make sure that everyone feels inclusive, included. We want to make sure that you feel that as an employee, uh, you have a place where you are not just welcome, but you're encouraged to grow and develop uh, and engage with others as well, too, and share uh, your experiences and suggestions of where we can make improvements as well. Uh, and again, making sure that the community members come into City Hall knowing that you know they are welcomed and that they are uh, the client 
client. You know, they are the people that we serve. Uh, we need to make sure that we bring uh, service and hospitality uh, to a, a point of standard that everyone will say, wow, they're doing great. Uh, you go to Brockton, you, you know what's going on. You know how to get to wherever it is you need to go. Uh, there's a directory, uh, there's uh, information provided as well to transparency uh, and again cultural competency. When we walk into City Hall, uh, there's people from all different backgrounds that you know speak different languages as well and there's a person there that you know even if they don't know that language, they know where to direct you, they know you know how they can help you and if they can't help you, they'll know who to get to be able to help you as well too and you know that's what uh, I always say, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a city to raise our champions. So. We'll give you a last word. Uh, why should they vote for you on November 5th? Great question. Uh, why you should vote for me on November 5th? Well, if you are ready for change, if you are ready for a uh, movement that's going to bring this city forth uh, for the next generations on, uh, I want you to know that I am dedicated to the city. I was born and raised here. I went off into the uh, community, uh, into the world, uh, acquired the skills that I needed, uh, and I came back. I didn't leave. I didn't, uh, you know, uh, look to uh, settle my roots elsewhere. I came back to the city of Brockton. I've worked for over half a decade with the uh, local, regional, state, and federal government here uh, representing this city as well, too. Uh, and the ideas that I have isn't just my ideas, it's our ideas. I've worked on different plans for the city, uh, especially the uh, urban revitalization plan, the uh, blueprint for Brockton plan, parking plan as well, uh, and uh, the uh, housing strategy plan, uh, the uh, bicycle pedestrian livability study as well. I've done countless road safety audits, so I know the data, know the statistics, and know the people and the relationships that's there as well uh, and I know again that I'm committed uh, to uh, moving the city forward so uh, I hope and I've earned your vote I will continue to fight for your vote and I'll continue to fight for the city so please make sure you're registered to vote you have till the uh, 16th and uh, November 5th is uh, again a time to make change so Jimmy never enough time I mean we could go on and talk forever yes, sir. but um but you know the, sh the show must go on. So, yes, first and foremost, I uh, thank you again for coming on and, and I wish you the best on November 5th. Thank you. I appreciate that.